Hi, have you ever wondered how to do a 2G horizontal plate book to pass that weld test for that job so you can start earning them big bucks? Completing it with a TIG root and an MMA fill. So we prepped our plate at 40 degrees and we put a landing or root face edge of about 1.5 mil and then we're rooting it with 100 amps with 2.4 side steel wire. And we're using a lay wire technique, pushing that molten pull straight through, fusing both edges together. So with that run complete, we move on to our hot pass, push angle again, and we're putting a weave over the top to create reinforcement over the root so that when we start to fill with our MMA rods, we don't disturb the root. So this is quite a quick run. We've increased our amp slightly for this run, so we've gone to about 115. Now when that run's complete, we then move on to our MMA rods. So first run, drag angle, about 15, 16 degrees, and then we're pointing it up slightly about 40 degrees, trying to defy gravity to keep that run sitting on that ledge. We're gonna split this run into two because our weave on our TIG run is quite wide. So we just move slowly along, fusing into the plate and that run. We're using 3.25 rods on about 120 amps. The 6013 classification, rutile coated, and we're running them on DC positive, so that's electrode positive. The thing we have to be careful of with this run is we don't put it too high so that we leave a very tight gap between that run and the top of the prep. If you do for some reason create a tight gap at the top of this run, then obviously grinding it would be the solution, as opposed to trying to force it in and fuse it out, which then could give you slag traps, which will fail your x-ray. So chipped off, and this is where we see whether we're a little bit high and we've got a bit of a tight gap. Moving on to our next run, same angle, still dragging. Now we're trying to fuse into the bottom of the prep. So this is where it's key that we don't put that run too tight. We'll use the same amps all the way through on this fill. So the trick is to keep that arc angle quite tight. So keep the rod fairly close to your weld pull. If your rod's too far away from the arc, this can cause lack of fusion with the weld pull being unstable. So coming to the end of that run, nice smooth action to finish. Descale, knocking that slag off. Sometimes you get it to peel, but it doesn't come off too badly on this one. Next run, so next layer, still down on the bottom again, same angle, same travel speed, keeping that arc tight, keeping our travel speed nice and consistent. So this is where welding gets a bit monotonous, you're just sticking one run on top of the other on top of the other to fill the prep. So the key to it is, is you always start at the bottom and work your way up. You never start at the top working your way down because your metal will roll and you'll get lack of fusion through cold roll. Like building bricks, always start at the bottom. You start with the floor, and work your way up to the top. And the key is to make sure that layer is flat and not full of lumps and bumps. So with those two runs in, we've now got a slightly tight gap at the top. As I said before, we'll clear it out with a grinder. Always better to be safe than sorry. Making sure that we're wide enough so that rod will sit in the bottom of the gully. So with that run complete, you should have a nice flat profile just showing the top edge just to give you something to work to when you're capping. So capping on the first run, we're now following that bottom edge, fusing into the edge and slightly into the plate, getting rid of that bottom edge of the weld on the flushing run. So the hardest thing with this run is trying to keep that as straight as you can. The problem is if you put a wavy first run in, then you will tend to follow that as you put the sequence of runs in the cap. So it's key that your first run is always as straight as you possibly can get it. Making sure your reinforcement is exactly the same, which is obviously controlled by your travel speed. So as with our fill, we're using exactly the same amp, same angle, same travel speed. So that run complete. Now we've got a peeler. We like it when that happens because it makes it easier to descale. So moving on to our second to last run, same again. Covering half of the previous run, working our angle up, keeping the same kind of profile, which is controlled by our travel speed, keeping it all nice and smooth and flat. And then we get a peeleth, which makes life so much easier than smashing it with a chipping hammer. Then we stick the last run on, covering the edge of the prep, making sure this is nice and straight as this is the last one you're going to see. So final result, hope it helps you getting that test passed. So this video is showing you horizontal with a TIG root, but if you want to mix it up and go a step further, you need to see the one with the MMA stick root on screen now.